This is the start of the exercise of the fall harvest. It's usually the fire. Nothing goes in there except tobacco. The only reason why you have to uh, respect the fire is to learn the respect and the use of the tobacco. And that all things that we have start off hand in hand with tobacco. We try and follow there's little groups, pockets of people that are trying to stay with those teachings. We call them teachings, traditional teachings. But that's, that's why we have this kind of gathering, just to have people either learn from it, try and understand it, or feel that they're part of something, something big. We can't go and say, this is what you do. This is what you will do. No, you don't. You just show by example, and you hope that people will follow by example, learning, watching, and feeling part of it. When you do um, wild animals, you always go put it back in the bush, because that's a gift that the animals give us to, so we can survive from them. They die for us. All these things that uh, we were taught, we don't see. All the bad stuff we're eating now, we think it's more good than these wild things that we're supposed to be eating. Some things are not animate in the world of Anishinaabe, but most things are because they're spiritual. Like the very rocks we see, a senig, they're alive. Their spirits. And every time we cut down a tree, we give it an offering. We're trying to be as traditional as possible. Not a lot of people from where I'm from actually uh, smoke fish anymore. I just like showing the kids, you know, so they'll uh, keep it going, keep the tradition going. I don't know, they're losing their culture, I guess, a little bit. Like my daughters, they don't... My oldest daughter used to love uh, hunting. Kind of losing it now. Um, for our fall harvest, she used to uh, go for partridge. And she would take my uh, her son, my grandson. She was trying to teach him, eh? But then... She's kind of lo losing her, uh, like, I don't know, maybe it's because she's too busy. I call myself a medicine keeper. As a young girl, I was always very interested in, in the medicines. As a young girl, I remember being out in the woods and smelling different uh, plants throughout the, the, the forest and really finding a lot of relaxation in the forest. I still feel that. I still feel if I go out into the forest, um, Mother Nature is so gentle and kind. And uh, since she offers up so much freely, I believe a lot of it is so gentle to our systems. It's there for us and it's there for our bodies to utilize Mother Earth in our surroundings. She's so kind that she gave us this. And so I feel it's important to go out into the communities and to, to um, spark the desire for young people to know about this so that they can have this knowledge, so they can go forth seven generations into the future and bring this knowledge forward. I really appreciate when people ask me to come in and share this knowledge. I think it's really important. And if people want to learn, then I'm excited to, to be able to provide that information. Uh, an elder was talking to me. I was at a powwow. And he says, uh, have you ever wondered why we are losing our language? Why we are losing our language and our culture, the way of life that we've that we've had through millennium is 
we don't talk about the, the staple food that we have anymore. You see, a long time ago, when somebody made a kill, it wasn't just uh, food for your freezer. It was shared right away. Everybody from the community came in and they got a piece. And while they were doing that, they would be visiting and they would be talking in their language and joking in their language and talking about the deer, why it gave its life so we could survive. That's one of the reasons why we don't have our language. If we never talk anymore. So we don't talk about what we have. To keep it alive, we need to have the fall feast, you know, the, the, the deer, um, the cooking, the partaking of helping out. As these children are, they, they learn. They see and they feel and they, they're able to touch. Because we as Native people are, we're, we're visualists. And we as Anishinaabe people speak in pictures. We don't speak uh, in terminologies like the English language. People are happy to help out. They'll bring a deer. They'll bring white fish. And it's it's good. I mean that's the way it used to be a long time ago. People helped out. As Anishinaabe, we follow the seasons. Everything is in cycle. 